Pearson correlation and simple linear regression can both be used to investigate if two numeric variables are linearly related. However, there are important differences between these two approaches. Pearson correlation is a measure of the strength and direction of the linear association between two numeric variables that makes no assumption of causality. Simple linear regression describes the linear relationship between a response variable, denoted by y, and an explanatory variable denoted by x, using a statistical model, and this model can be used to make predictions. Let's examine the key similarities and differences between Pearson correlation and simple linear regression. Both can be used to quantify the direction and strength of the linear relationship between two numeric variables. However, only regression predicts how the explanatory variable, x, causes the response variable, y, to change. With correlation, both variables are assumed to be random, whereas for regression, only the response variable, y, is assumed to be a random variable. The explanatory variable, x, is assumed to be fixed and measured without error. When calculating a correlation, you can swap the two variables around without affecting the results. However, for regression, if you interchange the explanatory and response variables, the results will also change. Finally, regression produces a statistical model, whereas correlation is a simple descriptive statistic. Let's look at Pearson correlation in more detail. Pearson correlation is a number ranging from negative 1 to 1 that represents the strength of the linear relationship between two numeric variables. The Pearson correlation is also known as the product moment correlation coefficient, or simply correlation. A value of 1 corresponds to a perfect positive linear relationship. A value of 0 means there is no linear relationship, and a value of negative 1 is a perfect negative relationship. The Pearson correlation, denoted by R, between variables x and y is calculated using this formula. Here, x bar is the mean of the x values, and y bar is the mean of the y values. The character n represents the sample size. Later on, we'll show you how to calculate the Pearson correlation using GenStat. When we're interested in the effect of an explanatory x variable on a response y variable, a regression analysis is appropriate. Simple linear regression describes the response variable y using this model. Here, the coefficients a and b are the intercept and slope of the regression line. The intercept a is the value of y when x is 0. The slope b is the change in y for every one unit increase in x. When the correlation is positive, the slope of the regression line will also be positive, and vice versa. The model is theoretical, and in practice there will be error. The statistical model is given by this formula, where epsilon, a variant of residuals, represents the difference between the predicted y values and the observed y values. The hat accent is used to denote values estimated from the observed data. The regression coefficients a and b are estimated by least squares. This results in a regression line that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. Let's now demonstrate how to calculate a Pearson correlation and fit a simple linear regression in GenStat. The example we'll use is from a concrete manufacturer who wants to know if the hardness of their concrete depends on the amount of cement used to make it. They collected data from 30 batches of concrete. The scatter plot of the data suggests that the two variables are linearly related. Let's first assess whether there is evidence of a significant Pearson correlation between the hardness of the concrete and the amount of cement used to make it. Our null hypothesis is that true correlation equals zero. Using GenStat, we can calculate the Pearson correlation and test for evidence against our null hypothesis using the Correlations menu. Select Stats. Summary Statistics Correlations Select the two variables that we want to correlate. Now, select Correlations as the output to display. We also want to test the null hypothesis that true correlation equals zero against the two-sided alternative hypothesis that the true correlation is not equal to zero. 
click Run, and let's see the output. We can see that the correlation estimated from the data is 0.82 with a p-value of less than 0.001. That is, there is strong statistical evidence of a linear relationship between the two variables. The validity of our hypothesis test depends on several assumptions, including that X and Y continuous, jointly normally distributed random variables. If the scatter plot indicates a nonlinear relationship between X and Y, the bivariate normal assumption is violated. Let's recreate the scatter plot that you saw earlier in this video. We select Graphics, 2D Scatter Plot, and I'll fill in the forms quickly to show you how it's done. You can always pause the video if you need more time to take this in. We can see that the scatter plot looks reasonably linear. We should also check whether both the X and Y variables appear to be normally distributed. This can be done graphically by inspecting, for example, a box plot, a histogram, or QQ plot. Alternatively, we could perform a hypothesis test of normality, such as the Shapiro Wilk test. For both variables in our dataset, neither their box plot nor Shapiro Wilk test indicate a lack of normality. You can create plots using the graphics menu. You can find the Shapiro Wilk test by selecting Stats. Statistical Tests, W Tests for Normality. Going back to our data set, as the hardness of the concrete is assumed to represent a response to changes in the amount of cement, it is more informative to model the data using a simple linear regression. Let's open the Linear Regression menu and fit a simple linear regression. Select Stats, Regression Analysis, Linear Models, then select Simple Linear Regression. Recall we want to see how concrete hardness responds to changes in cement amounts. Therefore, our response variable is the hardness of concrete. Our explanatory variable is the amount of cement. We'll open the Options menu to specify the output we want to see. Set these options. Click OK, then click Run to fit the model. Before we examine the regression model, let's inspect the residual diagnostic plots to see if the model assumptions appear to be OK. The residuals, epsilon, from the regression model are assumed to be independent and normally distributed, with constant variance. The residual diagnostic plot is useful for helping check these assumptions. The histogram, normal plot, and half-normal plot are used to assess normality. The histogram should be reasonably symmetric and bell-shaped. Both the normal plot and half-normal plot should form roughly a straight line. The scatter plot of residuals against fitted values is used to assess the constant variance assumption. The spread of the residuals should be equal over the range of fitted values. It can also reveal violations of the independence assumption or a lack of fit. The points should be randomly scattered without any pattern. For our model, the residual diagnostic plot looks adequate, so let's look at the output for our simple linear regression model. The estimate of the intercept is 15.91 with a standard error of 6.29. The estimate of the slope is 2.297 with a standard error of 0 0.305. Therefore, the model predicts that for every one unit increase in the amount of cement used, the hardness of the concrete produced increases by 2.297 units. We can write the equation for the regression line as follows. For a simple linear regression, we're also interested in whether there is evidence of a linear relationship with the explanatory variable. This can be assessed using the variance ratio, which, under the null hypothesis of no linear relationship, has an F distribution. The p-value from this test is less than 0.001, providing strong statistical evidence of a relationship. The percentage variance accounted for summarizes how much variability in the data is explained by the regression model. In this example, 65.7%.